the whole Sunday school lesson about being depressed because everybody you talk to now is on antidepressants, or a lot of people are. And I'm not saying sometimes people don't need medicine, but I'm telling you, we had a good study in here on how the Bible way not to be depressed. And I tell you what you need. I tell you what you need. You need to be in a good revival meeting where the Lord's power passes through and it'll quicken you. But it'll, it'll give you what you need just like that. Right? And you won't have to lay in the bed and cover your head up two or three days. Uh, you'll, uh, uh, you'll snap out of it, get up and do something for God. Now, take your Bible, John chapter number 20 this morning. I want to uh, bring you a message. I feel like on my heart, it's amazing truth here in the Bible. Uh, this is one of the thousands of we know the Bible's true, the story that I'm going to tell you this morning. John chapter 20, and uh, we'll look at verse number uh, 19. Uh, this is when Jesus rose from the dead. He rose from the dead on Sunday morning and the first day of the week. And then they went off somewhere and came back that evening and had Sunday night church. They sure did. That's where you get your scripture for Sunday evening service. And they came back and met again. Look at John chapter 20 and verse number 19. Then the same day, that was that Sunday, Sunday, at evening, that would be after, after 3 o'clock, so they might have started at 5, 6, like we do, whatever, Sunday evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, there's a reason that's in there, the doors were shut, nobody opened the doors, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. They scared to death. They didn't know what was going to happen. Came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. <whistles> Turn back to Luke. Luke chapter number 24. And I want to show you a little bit more about this, about this uh, same event here. Luke chapter number 24. And quickly look at uh, verse number uh, 36. Luke chapter 20, 24. The last chapter of Luke and verse number uh, 36. You'll see that there. Uh, look here what he said here in this one. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them. Same event. And said, peace unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a spirit. They thought it was a ghost. They said, you couldn't be Jesus. He's dead. No. It's a ghost. It's a spirit. That ain't real. That's where people get seeing ghosts. You say, yeah, you believe in ghosts? Yeah, absolutely. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost the spirit. And then there's a bunch of other spirits that's not holy that can appear to you too. So somebody come in your bedroom the other night, touched you on big toe and said I'm grandma and I come to tell you that everything's all right you keep doing what you're doing uh you just get up and get down and say plead I plead the blood of Jesus over this Lord get the devil out of here uh that wasn't my grandma uh the, their spirit they thought they seen a ghost they thought they seen a ghost and look here what he said and the and look at verse number 36 and as they spoke or as they spake Jesus stood in the midst of them and verse 38 and when he said unto them, Why are you troubled? Why do thoughts arise in your heart? Behold, here it is again, my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. Here's what he done. He said, Peace be unto you. They said, oh my goodness. How's it going? Oh, good night. I, 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 him? I don't know. Maybe it's a spirit. Oh, he said, don't worry about it, guys. He said, behold my hands and my feet. Look. Here's my hands. Look. Here's my feet. Now, somebody tell me, why would that make them believe him? What is he showing them? That's right. Those wounds. Those wounds in his hands and in his feet. He said, look, it's, you know it's me now? And I, that's what I want to preach about this morning. Is the only thing in heaven made by man. The only thing in heaven that's man made. Now you see this morning here all this is man made. Uh, carpenters and people done heat and air condition. All this work done here. This floor all that. Man didn't create this material. But man 
built and made this building that we're in. And it's like that all over the world. Everything you see, everything you can touch is something that's man-made. Now, heaven is not like that. Heaven is made by God himself. And brother, there, God made everything in heaven except for one thing. Now, when Jesus died on the cross, he had five wounds in his body. One here, one here, one there, one there, and one right here, right underneath his heart, where blood came out and purchased her, right where, they, where God took Eve out of Adam and made his wife. The, the Lord is the, is the last Adam, and God let that blood and water come out to purchase the church, that's us, his wife. Okay? Now look, he had five wounds in his body. One, two, three, four, five. Now the crown of thorns that was on his head no doubt brought blood and it was scratched, but he actually had five piercings in his body. Now this morning, I want you to look at me that way this, this morning, and it is a, a it, it, it established his identity. Now, let me say the difference in a wound and a scar. Most of the time when we preach that, and you hear people saying, the only thing in heaven uh, made by man, the scars in the hand of Jesus. I get it. I understand that. And, it, and I, I don't have a problem with people saying that. But the Bible don't actually use that word scar. It uses the word wounds. He was wounded. Now, the, the, it's very, they're very similar, of course. You can't have a scar without a wound. But a wound indicates that it's not completely healed over. A scar is something like, like uh, where somebody stabbed me with a pencil right there when I was a little kid, still got a little dark. I don't know if it's lead or what. And I got one right here where I got shot when I was 15 years old. Boy, playing around, heard me tell that story. Got a little scar right there. Got a little scar right there where it came out. I got one right there, self-inflicted. Uh, like an idiot when I was about 10 years old, I run through the house and leave my hand on the stove, on the, the heat heater of the house. And uh, uh, those scars. Those, those scars stay with me the rest of my life. This body is scarred. I got one right here where I had a bicycle wreck and just ripped my arm right down through there. It's still there right now. And that was uh, years and years and years ago. Those are scars. Now, a wound would be more like something that happened yesterday or something, just a, a sore that's not, not healed over at all. Now, this had just happened three days before this. But here's what I want you to see. And we'll talk about that for a minute. Here's what I love about this story is the Lord didn't have to do that. I mean, why did he do that? Why did God do that? I mean, here's a glorified body. Here's the Son of God that's going to be the King of the universe. And he gets up with a glorified body that can walk through walls. And yet he has wounds in his hands and in his feet. Why didn't God fix that? You ever thought about heaven, how perfect heaven's going to be? Now, this building here is not perfect. I mean, if you look real hard, you can see some waves in that sheet rock there. Right? We tried to cover them up and use flat paint and everything else. Uh, so, uh, uh, But you, you look at most, most houses, and you, you put a ruler on them or a level or something. I mean, there's imperfections. I don't care if it's a million-dollar mansion. You're going to help me, ladies. Uh, and, and you know what? I don't care if it's a million-dollar mansion. You, you cannot find something wrong with every building in this world. Your house, my house, no such thing. But if you thought about heaven, you know the heaven that we're going to live in, the, the actual city of God that we're going to live in as the bride of Christ forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. You know, let me tell you a little bit about that city. That city is 1,500 miles that way, 1,500 miles that way, 1,500 a square. 15, that's 6,000 miles around that thing. You can put the corner of it up in, uh, up in uh, like New York City, and the other, the corner, the next corner would be way out halfway across the United States. One other corner down in Miami. Really, that one city. One city. The corner of it in Miami, the other corner of it in New York, and the other one way out China or somewhere in, in uh, about halfway across the country, wherever that be. And 1,500 miles. And not just that, it's 1,500 miles high. Do you know how many, you know how many stories a 1,500-mile high building would have? 200,000. 
The Empire State Building was like 103. Uh, the World Trade Center, I think, was 110. Chicago, Sears Tower out in Chicago, bigger than that. They all tried to, so they could have the biggest building in the world. Then there's one over in some other country. Uh, now that's higher than that, but 120 stories. We're talking about 200,000 stories. That is a whoop. Now, if you don't, you think, you look at them skyscrapers in New York and you think, my goodness, but when you fly in there in an airplane, it <laughs> doesn't look like they're about that big. Look, there's New York. The whole, the whole city looks like this right here. I mean, it's big compared to us, but compared to this city, one city. You say, well, Brother Danny, is that as big as heaven's going to be? You know that they say that you could take everybody in the world, 7 billion people, you could take everybody in the world and put them in Jacksonville, Florida. One city. Oh, no, you couldn't. Measure it out. One city. I can say everybody have an acre of land, uh, but... Just, just people standing around just like we are in here this morning. Seven billion in Jacksonville. You ever been down I-95 to Jacksonville? You got two choices. You can take 295 and go around it, about 50 miles, or you can go straight through the middle of it. I always take my chances and go straight through it and usually come out quicker. But if you go all the way around it, that's a big place, brother. That's a mighty, mighty, mighty big place. I mean, you think about in the Super Bowl, they put... Uh, eighty thousand or hundred and in one little one little spot. That's just one little spot, several acres. And they say that everybody. So that means, listen to me. That means that if you 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 could take uh, all the people that's ever been in the world, and brother, you could you could give them a uh, and and uh, and and big old solid uh, place to live in. Uh, that would be like uh, I don't know. 50,000 square feet or something like that, all the Christians that are going to be in heaven. Not counting tens of thousands of acres for the river of life to come down through there. For the throne of God, I don't know how many thousands of acres that would be. There's God sitting up there on the throne. You're talking a big city. And the Bible said those gates of that city are made out of pearl. And listen to this. It said the streets are made. People say the streets are paved with gold. Uh -uh. It said they're, they're made out of pure gold. Real pure gold. Kind of you can, it's transparent. You can see through it. And it's solid 24 karat gold or ever how far I go up of that. The streets of gold. Can you imagine how much a city would be worth that had a gold street from here to New York? You know, a little bitty piece of gold. You know what that's worth? Look, people. If you're saved, that's where you're going to live. And you know why you ain't shouting? Because uh, oh, oh, you let the world dull your hope, buddy. Our hope ain't down here. Our hope is up there. We got something better. You won't ever have to call the, the Orkin man. They ain't going to be no roaches. They all in roach hell. Well, they ought to be. Ain't going to be no skeeters. Uh, uh, they ain't going to be no torch. They ain't going to need no briars and thorns. They ain't going to be no hospitals. They ain't going to be no uh, uh, emergency rooms. There'll be no divorce courts. Nobody will be sick in a solid, I mean, solid gold street, y'all. Good night in the morning. They fight over it down here. We walk on it up there. That's the sorry thing up our gold. Uh, what you make streets out of on um, solid gold? Can you have you ever you ever walked on uh, uh, real them river rock barefooted? How smooth them things are! You imagine barefooted walking down through the streets of gold. Glory to God! Hallelujah! And it's an absolute perfect measurement, absolute level, absolute peace. Absolute perfect temperature. We don't even need the sun because the Son of God's there and He's the light. Amen, brother. That is where you're going to live. Rivers and lakes and parks. You'll never be bored. You'll be the best you've ever felt down here in this world times 1,000 forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And there's only one thing there that man makes. The wounds in the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every war, well, our body will be perfect. I won't have that scar no more on my new body. I, my nose is crooked before I got broke playing ball. We didn't, I didn't go to the doctor. I was supposed to back then. It just hurt till it quit hurting. It's still, it's still crooked. You, I don't know if you can tell or not. Can you tell that? But it's going this way. 
And when, when I got a booger, it, it's easy to get out of this side. Or this, and it's hard to get out of that. Ain't much room in that. I don't mean that bad, but, but and my nose is crooked. But I ain't going to have no crooked nose in heaven. Amen. Amen. I mean, some, some of you, some of you I, could, I could pick out a lot worse with most of y'all. Those imperfections will be gone, brother. Gone. Hallelujah. Perfect body. There, and all of us, millions of people. Does this seem fair to you? Does this seem fair to you that he did it all so we could go to heaven and we all get a perfect body except him? Ain't that just like him? Isn't that just like something Jesus would do? Amen. Thank the Lord here this morning. Isn't that something like him? Now, uh, the, the scar the wound in the hands of Jesus. As a matter of fact, in Zechariah 13, there's prophecy. And that prophecy in Zechariah 13 said, uh, they're going to ask him, said, what are these wounds in thy hands? And he said, those that are wounded in the house of my friends, those wounds will be there. And throughout the ages, throughout the eons of times, of millenniums, of billions and billions and billions of years, we'll still see that. And there will be the scars in the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. I look at the city, it's perfect. I look at the building, our mansion, it's perfect. I look People are perfect. All the, the, the walls and everything just absolutely perfect. The weather's perfect. At perfect temperature all the time. Never have a bad problem or anything. And there's only one thing there left from this old world, this old sin-cursed world. And it's a wound here and a wound here and a wound there and a wound there and a wound here. He showed them his hands and his feet. By the way, it didn't say he showed them. He didn't wear a belly shirt girls. Uh, he showed them his hands and his feet. Stuck a little preaching in there for you that need it. And uh, he, he showed him his hands and his feet. And he said, the Bible said, he said, these are, so look at me. You don't believe it? Look at there. Look at there. There's a wound. There's a wound. There's a wound. There's a wound. The only thing in heaven made by man. Now, uh, I'm going to give you just a couple of thoughts right quick and we'll go. Why, why is it that? Uh, why did God leave those scars in the hands of Jesus? Why didn't the Lord just say, okay, the suffering's done, you rose from the dead, perfect body, your body, well, okay, and enter in and shout forever. Why didn't he do it? I'll tell you. Number one, because they had great influence upon them disciples. Tremendous influence. They had a little bit of doubt. They had a little bit of doubt. That ought to help you. Because we're like that too. Don't once in a while you have a little bit of a doubt. And I don't really know. Maybe this ain't the Lord. Maybe no Lord. I don't know about all. You, it's, that's perfectly human. It's normal to doubt. But you should never doubt more than 30 seconds. But it's, it's normal to doubt. And they doubt saying, I don't know if that's really him. I don't know if it's really him. You don't believe I'm him? Look at here. Look at here. Look at that. It had an influence on them disciples. Let me tell you people, every one of those disciples, Every one of them except for John, who escaped death by a miracle of God. They were dragged to death through the streets. They had their heads chopped off. They didn't have a big successful ministry. They were, they were scorned. They were beat. They took clubs and hammers and axes and beat them to death. Some of them were crucified like Peter, upside down. Can you imagine your feet sticking up and your head up like this? Beat them to death. They drug them. They martyred them. They met every one of them. Now listen, every one of them men, every one of them men, before they laid their head on the chopping block, before they put their hands out, do you think if they'd have been lying, if they'd have made that stuff up, like a lot of atheists say, you don't think they'd have backed out right there? They sure would have. Listen, if a man's willing to lay his life down for something, he believes it. And you know what that proves? It was a great sign and influence on them apostles. You know what it said? Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. They said, it's him. It's him. Up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph o'er his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain. He lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose. He had great influence on them. Number two, the, only, the reason they're scarred in the hands of Jesus is they are trophies of grace on display. They are. They're trophies of grace on display. Now here, down here in this, when you win something or you make an accomplishment, uh, you win a trophy. Well, used to be like that. You had to win something to get a trophy. But uh, some kind of accomplishment. Now all you got to do is show up. Or call in. Uh, you still get a trophy. But uh, back, back in the old days, you had to actually do something to get a trophy. 
And I imagine a lot of these old old basketball stars, football, baseball, whatever, if you went to their homes today, if you went to their homes, they'll have a room, and they'll have a big old case there, and a glass case, and they'll say, that right there is where, when we won the Super Bowl in 1968 or whatever. That right there is when I was put in the Hall of Fame. That right there is uh, uh, when I was the most valuable player. That right there. And they, they display those trophies. And uh, these are a, a, a picture of my accomplishment. Don't ever forget that year we won the Super Bowl. Don't ever forget that year uh, I, I averaged more higher batting average than anybody. I don't ever forget the, the reminders of that. They are reminders, brother, that they are the trophies of grace. And I'm going to tell you throughout the ages of ever, forever, and ever, 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 we'll never be able to forget God's trophy case. There are those scars in the hand. That's the day that he won the victory over the devil. That's the day that he won victory over death, hell, and the grave. Amen, people. What a shout today. Hallelujah. You know why? He's alive. The scars will be in heaven forever and ever and ever. A soldier. What if a soldier in the army came in, well, maybe back in the war or something, and they was the enemy was down here in place, and he was flying his uh, fighter plane, and he looked down, and he had a choice to make. They said the enemy was coming in, and it was coming in to kill the whole fort here, wife, children, everybody. And he can take them out with that plane, or he can just say, I'm, I'm not going to make it. I'll probably get killed if I do this. So I'm just going to swerve on around and go back to the base. He's got a choice. He can swerve on around and save his own life, or he can take them out and win the battle. What if that soldier said, well, I'm doing this for my wife, my kids, I'm doing this for the people of, the, of America. I'm doing this and takes his plane and, and blows it up right in the middle of them and is killed. He would be celebrated. His face would be on every TV screen in America. This man gave his life. This man, what a hero. What a hero. He deliberately, he was so unselfish. He was, he was a hero and gave up his life. Now, what if about a week later he pops back up? And he comes back in town. And everybody says, oh, my goodness, did you hear about that? Did you hear about that guy last week that crashed his plane? He's alive. He's on TV. Every TV in the country would be on. They'd look up, and he'd say, look here. Here's what happened to the burns on my neck. Here's what happened to the burns in my hand. Like, well, Lord, he'd, be, he'd never have to want for nothing. They'd make him a multimillionaire before the day's over. He would be celebrated. He'd be looked up there. He's the greatest T-Road to ever live. And he should be. Should be. I, 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 believe, I believe that myself, man. I'd give him something myself if I could. I mean, I'm going to tell you something. Here's a man who went to battle with sin and the devil. Every force of hell was on him on the cross. And the worst thing was God the Father turned his back when all the sin was placed on Jesus and made him cry out, My God, why hast thou forsaken me? Oh, what a story, y'all. What a story. Don't ever get over that story. The old, old story that never grows old. And then he dies and then he comes back. And he said, here's my wounds. Here's my trophies that we're going to display for the multitudes of millennium. From now on, they'll be there because of his trophies on display. He defeated sin. He defeated Satan. And then another thing. They'll reassure us there's a judgment day coming. Them hands reassure us they are answering day one these days. If all you people laughed at him, if all you people mocked, listen, I got that quote over Anton LaVey, the pastor of the first church of Satan, and he, he writes in there and he says, he said, I dip my forefinger in the watery blood of your impotent redeemer. Making fun of the blood of Jesus. I dip my finger in the watery blood of your redeemer. It's ridiculous. One of these days, that man will stand before God. And he'll look and see those scars in his hands and in his feet. And God will say, you got anything to say for yourself? He won't. I've heard people say they would. Wow, you will. We had a guy tell us one time, over in Iceville, we was out giving out tracks. This guy came up and he said, All right, when I see the Lord, I'm going to run up there and choke him on his throne. 
Oh, yeah, you're about the stupidest person I've ever met in my life, too. You ain't going to run and choke him on the throne. You're not going to, people say, well, I, I heard that, that some old girl, I don't know who she is, she puts out videos, I have no idea, somebody sent them to me or something, and she puts out videos laughing at the Bible and laughing at Christianity. She said, that's the dumbest story I've ever heard in my life. God had a son, and God had to kill his son so he could forgive you. What kind of God? You know, some idiot. The idiots talk like that. And, buddy, you know what people's wrong with? Say, I thought he is love. God is love, but I'll tell you what he is first. He's holy. Amen. Don't forget, that's why they don't understand. He's holy. He can't allow sin near him. So if somebody sins, there's got to be a price paid for it because of his holiness. But they don't know that. And she said, she said, if the God of the Bible came down here right now, she just said this the other day, she said, if the God of the Bible come down here right now and showed me he is real, I still wouldn't worship him. Any God like that, let little kids suffer, and let the, I ain't going to worship him. Now, that girl going to stand in front of him one of these days. When she stands before God, her head will be, she'll understand then. She'll know why little kids had to suffer. She'll know why people had to starve to death. She'll know why they had to be warned. Because the curse of sin on this world. People say that. They say, if God's so good, why don't he fix it? Just calm down, brother. He's going to. It's the long suffering of God right now. Just waiting on you. He's waiting on you to get right. That's why he's waiting on. He's waiting on people to get saved. But son, he's going to straighten this mess out one of these days. Don't you worry about it one bit. And those are a reminder and reassurance that judgment day is coming. And I'll say lastly this morning, there are going to be a reminder of what he's done for us. We'll behold him. I don't know that we'll get to remember when we're in heaven. God hadn't chose to reveal that to us. We don't know what kind of knowledge of our past or our or our this world maybe. You know, the sense of former things we passed away and there won't be no more sin, sorrow, and all that. But somehow, I think God's going to let us remember when we got saved. And He's going to throw those hands and His feet. And we'll say, that's the reason I'm here. And I fall at His feet. And I say, Lord, I mean, think about it. Look down yonder and there's a furnace. And that's where we could be and that's where we should be. Because of sin. And then we look and there's His scars. Well, look, there ain't no room for no man to get no glory. There ain't no room for us to think, wow, he's wonderful, he's great. No, buddy, there's only one person that deserves glory. There's only one person that deserves worship. There's only one person that deserves honor. The man who paid the price for our sins, y'all. That Years ago, they said there's this man, his neighbor's house caught on fire. And there's kids in the house, and, and daddy has gone to work. And the house caught on fire a long time ago. And the man was trying to get over there to help him. And the mama burned to death. And one of the kids, two of the kids burned to death. And he heard a baby screaming. And that man rushed into that house and went through them flames with them all around him like that and grabbed that little baby and held him like this right here, protected him with them flames hitting his hands and run out and saved that little boy. And they said as time went by, that little boy didn't have no, he didn't have no uh, family or nothing. So he went into state care for the DSS and the government had placed him. In, and a few, about three, 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 four years later, went by and he's, he's about four or five years old. And the state was trying to find a place for him to, uh, to stay. And they had a court date set. And they had this court date set and they said, uh, anybody... We, we know, you know, his foster parents, me and, me and Kelly are foster parents, and we've been through this, she goes through this, I let her do all that, all that court stuff, it's constantly, constantly trying to figure out this, anyway, it was the, back then, they was trying to find a placement for that little boy, and we got out, and there were several families interested, just, we'd like to have that little boy, we'd like to adopt that little boy, we'd like to uh, show him a good home, and, and there, there are sometimes people have bad motives for that, sometimes their motives are good, and so they have to show the judge of the court, why you should let me have custody of that little child? Why do I deserve it? And because they, because some people crook it. Some people do it for, because they think they're going to get some bunch of money, and some do it for maybe ungodly reasons. I don't know. But they, they have to prove the judge that you're willing and fit and able to take care of that child. And so they went down there and they stood before the judge, and there was a couple of families there. 
And one, they said, sir, would you like to say to the court here what, why you want this child? He said, yes, sir, your honor. He said, my wife and I uh, are financially able. Uh, do you uh, you got to prove that. Are financially able to raise this child. We can give him a good home. Uh, we'll be good to him, blah, 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 blah. And uh, went through it. He said, all right, sir, what do you say? Next guy stood up. He said, your honor, we have an extra room at our house. Uh, he'll have a room of his own. We'll raise him. We'll be good to him. Blah, 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 blah. And he said, anybody else? And that one man stood up. And that man heard about what was happening that day. And he said, Your Honor, I'd like to take that little boy and raise him as my own. I'll do the best I can. And the judge looked and he said, What do you have, sir? What do you have that would merit this court giving you custody of this child? He showed him his hands. He said that, sir. He said, I'm the man that went into that fire and pulled him out. My scars are proof that I really care about that. And obviously, you done guessed it, brother. The judge said, you got the kid. Because he had the scars to prove. He's like, Lord of God, if I don't shut up. Lord have mercy y'all Tell the old old story preacher Tell it to me one more time When I was laying up there on the floor At Nebo Baptist Church I'd have never got saved But somebody loved me enough To stick out his hands and his feet said, There's my scars Let him go to heaven when he dies Hallelujah That's why he still got them He still got them so we can remember Don't you sit here this morning and feel like nobody loves you He wants custody of you and a judge give it. He loved you enough to die for you. The only thing in heaven. The plates. The forks. All made by God. Jesus left and he said. I go to prepare a place for you. So he built it. You know he's raising a carpenter's shop. Right? And what could he build in 6,000 years. Or 2,000 years. Hmm. Built more house. Your foot. You can sell that for a tiny home. Built more house ain't a good uh, tree house, brother, compared to this one we're talking about. And the only thing there, we ain't no tiny home like Biltmore. Amen. We're going to see the scar in the hands of Jesus. Let's stand by our heads for prayer, please. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Luke, come on, Brandon, come on, let's sing a song this morning. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Maybe, maybe you're here this morning. Just maybe. You're not a Christian. And you say, Preacher, I really never heard that story put like that this morning. Young lady. Young man. Maybe you're here for a reason this morning. And God's brought you here. And God's speaking to your heart. Did you know you can get saved this morning? Did you know you can get saved? Everybody Jesus called in the Bible, He called them up publicly. We're going to have an invitation. If you're here this morning... If you're here this morning and you've been saved, but you've drifted away from the Lord, and you've let Him get out of sight, and the things of this world have clogged up your vision, you want to just come to the altar and say, Lord, I want a fresh glimpse. I want a fresh touch. Lord, of God, may anybody love me that much? At least I can do serve Him seven days a week. And I'm coming to that altar and I'm getting my heart right. Come on. If you're here this morning and you've never been saved, never been saved, this would be the best time ever. You just walk out and you see. Come down here and kneel on this old-fashioned altar. And just say, Lord, I want what Jesus done for me. You can be saved today. It's simple. Just come say, trust Him. Trust Him. You're not saved by crying. You're not saved by crying. You're not even saved by praying. You're saved by trusting what He done for you on the cross. Let God speak to you this morning. Will you do that? Heavenly Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name for that one or those here today who needs to come. Who needs to come. Help them, Lord, this morning to come. God, to do business with you. While there's still time. In Jesus' name we pray. And for his sake we ask it. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing this whole song. Everybody knows it. Something's already come. If you need to come. Just slide right out of your seat. Come on. Come on right now. Come on right now. Amen. Go ahead. Amen. Just as Amen. Let's all sing. I am without one plea. Everybody sing. But that. Come on, come on this morning. Come on this morning, friend. Just get down on your knee. Say, Lord, I sure do thank you for shedding that blood. Let them nail, nail your hands. 
Nail your feet. Come on, young lady. Come on, young man. One of you ladies pray for these girls coming here. Amen. Just get down here on your knees. Amen. Come on. That's right. Amen. 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 Let's all sing, everybody. Just I Come on this morning. And waiting not. Sing it now. Will you come today? Will you come today? Others are coming. Others are coming. How about it? You came on the bus. You came here this morning needing help. You come right now. Come on right now. Just slide right out of your seat. Give it to him. Give it to him, baby. Let the Lord help you today. Come on, friend. Come on. Come on right now. Of God I come. Amen. Let's sing one more verse. One more. Everybody, one more. This will be the last verse. Just as Amen. Amen. You need to come. Come on. Come on. That's right. He'll, he'll receive you if you'll come. Because of nails, he'll forgive you of your sin. That's right. Because thy promise I believe, O Lamb of God, I come, I come, I come. Hell, praise the Lord. If you're glad and you're thankful, forever and ever and ever and ever, we'll see those wounds in His hands. Why didn't, why didn't the Lord just fix it to where His body would not have that? That's why you'd think. That's why you know God wrote the Bible. People would think something like that. You'd never think. If people made up the Bible, they wouldn't put that in there. They said, boy, you got a perfect body and we're all going to have... Blah, 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 you know? But the Lord left those wounds. He said, here, look. My goodness. I don't know how I'm going to feel when I see that. Will I cry? Will I shout? I don't know how I feel when I say that. When you look at them wounds in Jesus Christ's hand and say, it's my fault. We think about them old low, low down dirty man that drove that nail. And he, oh, he ought to go to hell. Well, let me tell you something, buddy. Every time you said a cuss word, every time you drunk a beer, every time you told a lie, every time you done, that's you putting them, them nails in his hand. Hey, we're responsible for that just as much as that man was our sins. Amen. Hallelujah. God's been good to us. All right. Well, if you're thankful for what the Lord done for you, holler amen. amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right. We'll take a little break. Go get you something to eat. Take your nap. Do whatever you got to do on Sunday evening. Be back tonight at 6 o'clock. Come praying. And uh, I'm going to talk to you about how to not get killed when you're young tonight. How, how to live a long life. There are exceptions. But uh, how to live a long life. That'll be tonight. At 6 o'clock, come pray. Let's bow our heads for prayer. DJ, dismiss his brother. Everybody be friendly. If you need to get signed up for the Rockingham trip for the bus, everybody's going to ride the bus to Rockingham. It's free, free supper and everything. Sign up here this, uh, this morning. Okay, brother, go ahead.